Welcome to another edition of Beyond the Sermon. I'm Matt Hotha, the Director of Production and Online Engagement. And I'm Magreta Vega, the Senior Pastor. So today we're going to have a little conversation uh, following up on Magreta's sermon that he just preached. And if you haven't listened to the sermon yet, you can go back to our YouTube channel and find it, watch the sermon, and then come back and listen to us talk about it. So Magre, in your sermon, you referenced this prayer that you yeah. have started all your sermons with, uh, yeah. actually since January of 2022. 2022, not 2023. Yeah. So we, it's almost got three years of life on it. Yeah. Uh, I remember in summer of 2022, we did a little extended conversation about right. that prayer itself. Right. Remind us of what that prayer is and maybe give us a little bit of the backstory about how you practically, but also theologically found your found yourself praying that prayer. Yeah, there were some practical reasons to introduce a prayer in between the scripture reading and the sermon. Uh, when we started sanctuary worship again, uh, as we emerged from the pandemic, I needed something to be a break between my reading of the scripture and the starting of the preaching of the sermon. And this is a convention that often preachers will turn to, to offer some kind of prayer. And as I looked at many of the regular, typical prayers that preachers preach, none of them felt right to me. Um, and that was in the process of the fall 2021 that I was trying to find the right kind of prayer to offer. And then, as you remind me, it was in January of 2022 that we did this Philippian series. And for reasons that I go, to, uh, go through in the sermon, uh, the notions of empathy, curiosity, and humility, generosity, compassion, they resonated with, with me in a sort of a deeper spiritual level, but then I realized, you know, reminding us as a congregation of these values uh, was an effective way to set the template for the sermon each and every Sunday, rather than a, a, a kind of prayer that, where I'm invoking air cover for me from the Spirit, which is often what preachers turn to, just reminding us of these values as a lens through which to experience the message uh, felt like a really appropriate thing. Yeah, it also felt like values that are true to who you are and yeah. true to who we want to be as an organization, right. Right. Um, right. which I think helped people also understand that whatever they might hear in this message, even if it felt a little too, maybe maybe to them it sounded political or something like that, right. it was trying to take a certain stance that really the ultimate stance we're taking is one of just empathy, curiosity, right. and humility, right? I found that prayer to be both pastoral and prophetic. Mm -hmm. uh, even during times of unsettledness or chaos with whatever people were bringing into that situation or whatever we were experiencing together as a community, just those anchoring values were both comforting but also challenging. And in fact, there have been people over the past two and a half years who have said to me, uh, that that it's been that prayer that they've really held on to. I mean, I've said it so repetitively that people can probably say it by heart, and that's been the hope. And people have said that they've anchored themselves in those values during times of unsettledness, uncertainty, chaos, uh, which does sort of bring the question to us as to what, what do we turn to? Um, if not values like these, what do we turn to in times of unsettledness? Um, and we've certainly been experiencing a lot of that over the past several weeks, several months. And as we draw to a close the Christian liturgical year, it's often appropriate for us to reflect back as we look ahead to uh, how God has helped us find settledness in the present moment so that we can move into the upcoming season with courage. So how have you found settledness in your spirit during times? Yeah, so for, for me, I, I find settledness in music, mm. uh, sp specifically in musicals. It's actually something you and I kind of uh, share, a, share an affinity for. Yeah. Um, but for me, in particular, there's been this line from the Broadway musical Hadestown. Great that's musical. That's been sitting with me. Yeah. Great musical. Um, it's a bit of a weird musical. You have to understand this. Uh, it's bringing together two Greek myths of Orpheus and oh, Eurydice, Eurydice, and then Hades and Persephone. And it brings these two myths together intertwined around ideas of climate change and justice. Oh gosh, so much stuff in this musical. Um, but there's the narrator of the musical is Hermes. And it's this, be this beautiful voice. And towards the end of the musical, he says this line where he basically says, why do we tell this story? Mm -hmm. Why do we sing this story? Mm -hmm. Why do we sing it again? Well, we're gonna sing it again. Mm -hmm. Because this time maybe, just maybe, it'll turn out a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that it's a sad song is what he's saying. It's, it's a tragedy and yet we still sing it. Mm -hmm. And as we come to the end of the Christian year, as we look back, granted normally for many secular people, we look back in January maybe, 
But this for me really begins a reflective time mm -hmm. of when I start looking back on the last year. Mm -hmm. And it was a heck of a year. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do it all over again, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and we do it because we really believe that it might turn out a little bit differently the next time, mm -hmm. you know? And I think there's something in the Christian year of starting with Advent, right. then going right into Lent, or getting a little bit of breathing space, but then going right into Lent and Easter, that by April, we've pretty much done the, the cycle of the Christian year, right. and then we're in what's called ordinary time. Right. And I like to think about that's the time where you take everything you just learned in that crash course of December to April, and now the job is to apply that in the yeah. ordinary time. Yeah. What has the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus taught us, and how do we apply it in our lives? Yeah. That's the challenge. There's so much insight in what you said, and the word that I uh, jumped out at me is the word cycle. Um, that is the way particularly Jewish people and a lot of Eastern uh, sort of perspectives view time as cyclical. Mm -hmm. as a kind of rhythmic regularity, a kind of uh, reliable constancy to time itself. There is a circular notion. And I find that to be very comforting uh, because for us Westerners, uh, we look at time linearly, almost progressively, that there's a past, a present, and a future. And that is comforting in some ways, but when things go haywire, <laughs> Suddenly that line gets crooked, it has ups and downs, mm -hmm. and we feel unsettled by what we thought was a reliable straight line of time, and we discover there's an unsteadiness to it. And so there is something very comforting about time as circular, as cyclical, as regular, as rhythmic. And, and since you know the, the Hebrew Bible so well, you know that the images of the circularity of time are all throughout the Hebrew scriptures. Mm -hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes, that iconic uh, chapter chapter three. Um, there's, a, there's a constancy to the sunrise and the sunset. The, 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 as my predecessor said, Sundays come with ruthless regularity. <laughs> So even the observance of the Christian liturgical year, we have Christ the King Sunday, where we look back at the year behind us, but we anticipate the arrival of Christ the King again in Advent. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and then the invoking of that line from Hadestown. Right. Why do we sing these songs? We sing these songs, even though we know how they end, so that they might end differently again. I mean, there's a, there's a real prophetic and pastoral challenge to that. We, we know these stories, um, but, but even though we know how they end, we tell them again so that we can both anchor ourselves in their truth and then dare to imagine a different kind of ending. Um, so I, I find comfort in unsettling times in looking at time circularly and reliably, but I also, I also find comfort um, in novel forms of expression, mm -hmm. in arts, in rhetoric. I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of weeks, that in times of uncertainty and distress, either personally or in community or as a nation, those have been the times when we have turned to artists, uh, like composers and lyricists mm -hmm. of musicals, like soaring rhetoricians, orators, who can give words and language to the moment that we're in. Uh, like mu musicians, instrumentalists, vocalists, like painters and sculptors, um, like the words of scripture, uh, like preachers, hopefully. Um, hopefully preachers can rise to the occasion and offer something that, that expresses something deep in a beautiful and profound way. Um, and I'll be looking to that. Uh, and I hope that we will all attune ourselves to what those voices might have to tell us during seasons of uncertainty. Uh, maybe it's time for us to platform them, mm -hmm. to turn that noun into a verb, to just give them a stage by which they can give voice to our unsettledness, but also, but also uh, point us toward hope. To, to tell us the songs, again, whose stories we already know, but to cast them in a way that can point us to something different. Yeah. So hopefully throughout the Beyond the Sermons in the next, yeah. you know, couple of months, you know, so on and so forth, we'll, we'll use those as opportunities to platform things mm -hmm. that we've been exploring, reading, listening to, viewing, 
And we probably can't necessarily bring people into this space, but we can certainly share things either via the notes or putting things up on the screen as you know, McGray's experienced them or I've experienced them. So I think for today, I would be honored if you guys went and listened to the Hades Town musical. <laughs> I think it's an amazing musical. Uh, and if you come across uh, some kind of artist, musician, uh, orator that inspires you, that gives voice to whatever you're feeling in a deep way and points you towards something hopeful, uh, we would love to hear that as well. I think let's cast the net wide. Yeah. And you can comment with that in uh, on this YouTube video, comment in the Facebook comments down below, however you want to do it. But let us know about that content because we'd love to engage with it as well. Well, I think that brings our time to a close today. Thank you so much, McGray, for being here. Thank you all for watching, and we'll be back next week with another edition of Beyond the Sermon. Mm -hmm.